Sir Shahabi is a Bahrain Freedom Movement who joins us uh, from London. Sir Shahabi, welcome. Uh, I'm going to just uh, ask you the question uh, in the form of question, Iran's stance, in which it is said that Manama's normalization of ties with Tel Aviv will compromise the cause of Palestine and decades of Palestinian struggles on the one hand, and also uh, the sufferings of Palestinians is being uh, exchanged in favor of U.S. elections. That's Iran's stance. Do you agree with that? Well, today is a black day in the history of our country and our people. We have never anticipated that this regime, despite all its uh, shortcomings and the crimes, would also venture out of the uh, Arab consensus, Arab and Muslim consensus, to go to, uh, and take that step further, the step of, uh, of, of, of giving uh, and betraying the Palestinian cause and also allying itself with the Zionists, with the occupiers. Of course, we as uh, an opposition have always viewed al-Khalifa as occupiers themselves. They have occupied Bahrain, and uh, they have a similar mentality to that of the uh, Israelis. But today it is clear that uh, the people in Bahrain are in a revolution. If you look at the social media this morning and since last night, you will see that almost everybody is uh, taking high stake uh, and uh, high risk by denouncing uh, the, uh, the Al-Khalifa uh, decision to normalize relations with Israel. Of course, we know they are not free. Of course, we know that they receive the instructions directly from Washington. And of course, the Emirates uh, have also paid money in order to, uh, to publicize its uh, dishonest uh, uh, cause of normalizing uh, links with, uh, with the Israelis, with the occupiers of Palestine. So today is a day of mourning uh, in Bahrain and in the Gulf as a whole, because it is the day when betrayal of Palestine has been declared an official policy of the Khalifis and the Emiratis, and most likely by the Saudis. When you take a look at the U.S. role, what do you think, uh, well, uh, I, I asked you in my question that uh, Iran believes that this is uh, in exchange for the U.S. elections, but what do you think the U.S., uh, I mean, we can call it a U.S. initiative. U.S. is the one that brokered this, just like the so-called deal of the century. What is it that the U.S. is after when it's pushing these uh, Arab uh, regimes to forge uh, ties and normalize ties with Israel? Well, it is a, a long-standing process and policy of the United States. This is nothing new. They have always maintained that they would keep Israel uh, with superior um, military capability uh, to the Arabs. This, is, this has always been their policy. They had uh, sponsored the first peace treaty with Egypt in 1979 with President Sadat of Egypt. Of course, we know that Sadat Within two years, he was killed by the Egyptian people who felt betrayed by, by him. So uh, America has always been supporting Israel and standing at the forefront uh, in, the Arab, uh, in the Arab and, and Muslim world and also in the world, boycotting, uh, Arab, uh, boycotting for example, and withdrawing from, from uh, Human Rights Council, from any, any uh, organization, uh, organizations that want to, to scrutinize the Israeli policies. So America is behind all of this. Uh, it is, especially under uh, President Trump, he has an election coming and he wants to show the world uh, at a time when he has failed at almost every level, including the coronavirus and the economy, he wants to show the Americans that he has managed to do something. Of course, it is an election issue, but it is also a, a part of the long-standing U.S. policy in the Middle East against the Palestinians and the, pro, uh, the occupiers of Palestine. But this U.S. president, uh, Said Shahabi, believes... Well, let me, let me first quote you what he has said, amongst many statements that he's made on this, obviously. But one of them is that I can see a lot of good things happening with respect to the Palestinians. Um, and he says that in the context where he believes that the Palestinians are going to end their conflict with Israel once enough Arab uh, nations, Arab countries join uh, what is happening. Um, is he under a false pretense here, or uh, do, you, do you agree with that, or do you think otherwise? 
Well, I think he's dreaming. I do not think any uh, people who, whose land uh, has been occupied or under occupation will ever accept uh, th that uh, situation. They will always revolt. They will, uh, they will always resist occupation. They have paid uh, a, lo a high price over the past 70 years or so. So I, it is unlikely, uh, first of all, unlikely that the Arab uh, countries will totally uh, abandon the Palestinian cause and non relations with Israel. And secondly, they are unlikely, uh, the Palestinians are unlikely to give up their cause. We know that uh, there are many good countries. Let us not be blinded by uh, as few uh, semi-states. These are stateless. Uh, UAE, what is this, uh, UAE? It's only because yeah, UAE is becoming a strong country because the big real powers in the Middle East and the Arab world have been sidelined and destroyed, like Egypt is out of the uh, situation because of uh, the uh, military takeover. Uh, Syria has been destroyed by uh, terrorism and, and other things. Uh, Iraq has been sidelined by also terrorism. Uh, Libya is uh, with the Emirates uh, involving itself inside. Sudan has been taken away by the Emirates efforts uh, and made to sign probably to start dealing with Israel. Uh, Algeria has been over the past 30 years undergoing a lot of internal problems. Uh, Yemen, this are the, uh, has been engaged in, uh, uh, in an op uh, aggression by the Saudi Emirati. So the Emiratis with the Saudis, supported by uh, Israel over the past 10 years, have been working to weaken, to destroy the Arab world, and uh, so that they, are, they become the strong uh, people, strong leaders of the Arab world. You, Imarat is only six, seven, eight hundred thousand people of native origin. Do you think that they, are, they deserve to be the rulers of the Arab world, of more than 400 million? But it is because the other people are planning their uh, policies and they are supporting them to uh, betray uh, to betray the people of Palestine and betray the Arab and Muslim causes. Otherwise, uh, they are nothing in real terms. And I hope that the Arab people will reawaken again. And I hope these large country, big countries which have been sidelined will take over and take their natural uh, role in the leadership of the Arab world. Thank you for that, Sayyid Shabi from the Bahrain Freedom Movements. Thank you very much.